Hi everyone, my name is Zach, and this is a town I grew up in. And growing up, I was told that I could have one of two jobs. I could either work at the oil refinery, oh, that's a town, and I could either work at the oil refinery or at the military base. Now, I was raised by two idealistic social workers who above all taught me the golden rule, to treat other people how I wanted to be treated. And quite frankly, as a kid who's trying to figure out who he is in the world, I couldn't see a future living with myself, building weapons that killed people, or helping ruin the environment. And as a result, I felt lost. Uh, I thought I had no future. And one night, I was on Google, and I got remarkably lucky because I discovered coding. And I built websites, lots and lots of terrible, terrible, <laughs> terrible websites that nobody cared about. Um, and after doing this for long enough, uh, after having no friends that were interested in coding, I've ne at this time point, I had never met anyone else that had written code before. I didn't even realize this was a career. I almost gave up. And everything changed when I had the opportunity to help make something that people actually did want, which was this game called Grawl. Um, and people loved Grawl. Uh, people love Grawl so much that, that they do ridiculous things, like make ridiculous music videos in the game about the game. And I want to show you an excerpt from one of them here. It's amazing. It's like the greatest thing you've ever seen. I know you want pop, you want it, you want it, you want it, you want it, this year's remix, got some phonics, oh, I got pop, I got it, I got rockin' electronic, beats, I got your pop music, what the future just love, so come on, let's yeah, I mean, when was the last time you heard the Black Eyed Peas, right? Um, mixed with Jason Derulo. Um, I mean, this was this incredibly formative experience, um, because as a middle schooler who was trying to figure out who I was in the world, um, for the first time ever, um, I, I realized that I was a real person. Uh, in the process of learning to code, I learned to be. Uh, I realized that I mattered. Uh, for the first time in my entire life, I, I saw a future for myself. Um, I cannot overstate how important this was. Uh, and when I finally made it to high school, uh, I really struggled. Um, I, I missed a lot of school. I was technically truant. Uh, and I dropped out after my freshman year. Um, and instead of working at the gas station, uh, I knew how to code. Uh, so I was able to work my way into the technology industry. And when I was given $100,000 by an infamous technology billionaire, to not go to college. Uh, instead of starting a for-profit like every other person in my class, I started a non-profit because, quite frankly, coding changes lives. And something as empowering as this shouldn't be left to chance, and that's exactly what we're doing today. In 2018, in 2018, still 60% of schools in this country don't offer any computing classes. Um, I got lucky, uh, and there is a version of my life where I didn't, and that's why I started Hack Club. Hack Club helps high school students start the computer science programs they wish their schools offered. Uh, specifically, we help high schoolers start computer science clubs. These are student-led groups that meet weekly, typically after school for two hours. And in these meetings, students learn how to code together. Everyone starts with no experience. And by the end of the first meeting, everyone's launched their first website. By the end of the third, everyone's built their first game. And by the end of the school year, everyone's launched dozens of projects. Uh, they've been to events hosted by other hack clubs in their community. And hopefully, they feel part of a community. Um, and our students go on and do amazing, amazing things. Uh, like Samarth Jaju, who's one of our students from India. Uh, he's a 14-year-old. Uh, and Samarth's thing, after learning to code in hack club, is building projects and launching them on Product Hunt. And for the past five months, every month, he's built a project. And he's posted it on Product Hunt. And he's gotten over 100 upvotes. Here's a 14-year-old in India um, who learned to code and is regularly building things that get more popular than venture-backed startups. Is that amazing? That's incredible. And the thing that Samarth teaches us, uh, or at least the thing that he taught me, is that we drastically underestimate 14-year-olds. Uh, and sometimes all it takes is taking a bet, uh, or at least having the chance to have a bet being taken on you. Um, and being part of Hack Club has been the greatest privilege in my entire life because in 2017, we were able to take a bet on 10,000 students around the world. Um, two years ago, when we launched, Hack Club was a little idea in a little bedroom in a large San Francisco apartment with eight roommates, one of whom was living in the closet. Literally, in the closet. Um, there's a Business Insider article about it. Um, 
And uh, since, it's grown to a movement uh, that's a lot bigger than me. Uh, today, we have chapters across 30 states, across 13 countries, um, and it's just been amazing seeing what our students build. Um, the outcomes of Hack Club that I'm most proud of are, are outcomes of hope, because I think we have a problem in this country that we don't like talking about, uh, which is despite all of the progress that we've seen over the past 100 years, every quality of life metric has gone drastically up. We've gone from not knowing how to fly to getting on the moon, and now recently Mars. Um, we've built computers, we've built the internet. Despite all of this progress, still today, when asked by Gallup, 46% of students said that they don't have hope for the future. It's less than half. Uh, and that's why I'm proud of some of our students like Megan, um, who when I was speaking with her on the phone a couple weeks ago, she told me that before she started her hack club, uh, she was trying to figure out who she was, and in the process of trying to figure out who she was, she decided that she wasn't. Uh, and fortunately, that's changed. Uh, and fortunately, it's changed for a lot of students at her school, and Megan's amazing now. She runs one of the largest clubs at her school. This summer, they ran a 100-person middle school summer program through their club. They used the money from that to host the first high school hackathon in Cincinnati. And now, using the momentum from that high school hackathon, they're running outreach programs at their local middle and elementary schools. She's built an institution in, in Cincinnati, and she's amazing. Um, so I was supposed to come to all of you with an ask, um, like some sort of inspirational call to action. Uh, and the truth is that we're fundraising. Um, Hack Club's tiny. It's just two of us who've invested all of our savings uh, to try to create something that we know should exist in the world. Um, but I also know that this is a no-ask environment. Um, so my ask for all of you is actually really simple. Um, and it's that I think we all know that the youth are our future. And right now, across the country, the youth are telling us that they're hurting. They're telling us that they don't feel safe in schools. They're telling us that they don't have hope and they're telling us that they're sick and tired of waiting for adults to solve their problems, and they're going to take matters into their own hands. We're seeing students advocating for gun reform. We're seeing students start the programs they wish their schools offered. And my only ask for all of you is to please listen. This is a chance to be on the right side of history.